Okay. Okay, let's come back to the discussion. So, what you are saying is a part of the government. Okay, doing welfare needs or whatever it is. Now, good govern good governance is an aspect which is highly focused upon when we look after the implementation process of the government. Okay. For example, for example, when a government is trying to implement any of the public policies. So government can do it through so many ways, but what, which one is the best way? So that it becomes very easy for the public to get the welfare or the benefits. Okay, from any of the schemes. Are you understanding? So the best way, if you are selecting the best way, then you can say, okay, now what is the quote or the slogan that the government is trying to promote to promote good governance? It is a minimum government, maximum governance. By this quote, what is government trying to do? Government is trying to minimize the number of tables through which files are passed and they are trying to promote a single window clearance system. Best example is your direct benefit transfer, DPT schemes, through which government is directly paying the beneficiary accounts in their account. Directly it is getting transferred from the government's account to the beneficiary account. But before that, it was through the manual approach, where it has to be passed by from, many, from various tables and where there were a lot of leakages and corruption happening. Because of leakages and corruption, do you think government's intention was good to promote welfare? But can we say it is a good governance? No. In, even when government is trying, for example, there are so many platforms right now. For example, the recently launched Mission Basundhara for land reforms or Dharitri app. Okay. Or the government that is trying to create everything online through e uh, electronic systems. Or in fact, when we talk about electronic national agricultural marketing system for the farmers to determine to determine the best rate, okay, to determine the best rate of the agricultural produce for the farmers, government is trying to promote through ENEM by reforming within the APMC sectors or the Mandi system. Now, what is this? All these are examples of good governance because government is trying to promote more and more effectiveness in a more efficient manner by trying to promote transparency and accountability so that harassment of people is minimized okay people's masses time is saved and delivery of public service is becoming efficient now whatever steps are being taken in order to do this we can say that it is promoting what good governance are you getting it now the question here that is being asked the correlation of good governance with democracy now what is democracy you can start your answer in this particular question either by defining what is good governance or what is democracy okay now again how good governance and democracy is related for example if there is no constitution of India, let us assume there is no constitution of India, but there can be a government. What is the constitution's role in promoting good governance? Because constitution of India claims that our country is a democracy. It is written in the preamble itself. A country is democratic, republic, sovereign, secular and everything, right? But how is the constitution making the governance a good one? Because constitution is also restricting the power or the authority of the government. How? For example, if you talk about Article 15, Directive Principles of State Policy, the constitution makes the executive collectively responsible to the legislatures. So executive cannot take up any authoritative rule or it or cannot get transformed into a totalitarian form of government. Okay, so do you think constitution is also helping to promote good governance in the society? Definitely yes. Okay, that I mean idealistic or realistic or ahiyasu. 
cotton no okay but now correlation of good governance with democracy is meant yeah question which is dispersion of power amongst the governed instead of centralization in the elites for example if we can take example from the covid situation okay covid or homoyot covid or homoyot government a ekdom simple way it is best example you operate it is my mind is it way is covid or homoyot government ki korise sop launch korise to for what to check the spread of the virus yes that is also part of the governance yes or no but is government can government successfully check or put a control over the spread of the virus yes only by the government they can do it they cannot there are not many this many number of men powers available there apuni ekhon gaor bhitor khumai kone ghor bahar dulaise after the curfew time government or that even men power and they can observe it how see uh, again we have to we are seeing from an indian society perspective okay social testing educating children See, we'll talk from India's perspective. Okay, we'll not talk from US perspective. We'll talk from India's perspective. So, for for India, the population and US population is completely different. The manpower available in India from government's perspective or from police perspective is completely different. So, for India's perspective, without the thing of social auditing, without the participation of the panchayat or the gram sabhas okay it is not possible to keep people under quarantine or to maintain social distance because we have to talk from indian society's perspective it is not possible for the government to make people follow the sop or whatever the standard operating procedures were released by the government to do it in a proper manner unless and until government is trying to disperse the power at where amongst the governed at the ground level and that is where the comes there is also topic role of ngos self help groups okay and local self government government te ki korise social auditing kori bole ground 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 sabhar level of mandal sor level of hokoloke power di dise asha karmi workers anganwadi workers sok ki dise power dise je apnake ghore ghore maintain monitor koribo je actually sop follow hoise ne nai manu quarantine hoy ase ne nai bahir pa jodi manu aise tanu ghor pa bahir goise niki so that is what sop is governance but good governance to kitia hol je where there is good governance one jot corruption and leakages ba inefficiency nai ba ineffectiveness nai of any policy taken by government so it can be so in case of covid also it was it is only possible in for indian society only when there is dispersion of power amongst the government for example one more example i can give you in terms of disaster government has governance through national disaster management authority act 2005 it has its ndrf it has it, ha, it has its sdrf yes in terms of any disaster yes or no tell me in terms of any disaster in terms of any in times of any disaster government or existing functionary asen and i as it definitely ndrf as sdrf as okay our our ndma act not in fact mentioned was that pre disaster ki kam koribo during disaster ki kam koribo post disaster ki kam koribo that is what governance but recently we had a bagzan oil crisis jo oil leakage hoyse right in Dihing Batka area over the Tinsukia district, Upper Assam. Tate fire to Bondahota Kimal Homel Legale. It took almost one month. It was on till 20 25 days. Why did it happen? Because government was waiting for experts to come from Singapore. Then government, a local level of power to disperse a corona, they tell you, can I hit to time out, react, or respond? Getting it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that 
disaster time out community participation is the most important thing to mitigate the effects negative impacts because of any disaster so power should be dispersed if you are trying to promote good governance again again yata ami koisu je ami suppose national food security act solai asu okay ba ami mg narega act solai asu ba ami msp solai asu minimum support price it was of different welfare major schemes or comment this can promote good this can promote good governance only when now understand very clearly government e jodi farmers of input subsidies dibo lage ba msp dibo lage government e jodi paisa tu through various tables diye where the government size is very big will farmers ever get that money it will be very very difficult but if government is directly transferring the money to jene ke amar arunodoy scheme all females jikini eligible females they are getting around 830 rupees aur paisa to directly tell over bank or account dot khumai ase which means that the leakages and corruptions are being taken care of so that is what we understand by good governance so good governance you can simply define that whenever government is promoting a public service delivery without or minimum with the minimum level of leakages corruption by promoting transparency and accountability within the system by highlighting the slogan of minimum government and maximum governance we can call it as a good governance are you getting it you can even write a because good governance means what public service mechanism to me bhal kori bole public service of what anything whatever government is providing service to the it can be for welfare it can be even infrastructure it can be for example good governance can be also promoted through various different investment models for example amar jeta joakali ami jeta pati silo je railways o khetro jeta government e railways solai ase so that good governance promote no hobo pare but when we are trying to imp- Would bring upon new investment models like Swiss talents or public-private partnership or uh, or Herod the mod uh, the uh, uh, hybrid annuity model, okay? Hybrid annuity model of investment. If we are missing, budget economics class, what key kind of difference key hoy? So that key hoy se that even public are also participating that power to disperse kori dia hoy se. For example, bot model, BOT, build, operate, transfer. So the power has been dispersed to whom? To the lower level. Decentralization is a decentralization money key. Division of power or sharing of power with the lower levels. So that key how about it? Yeah, that junto party pay se to build, to operate and transfer. So they will look after what the entire service delivery of the road or of any project. So they are also made accountable. Okay, but obviously under proper regulation and monitoring, it has to happen. ओके सो गुड गवर्नेंस আমি যেটা পাতি আছো ইয়া যোন কোশ্চেন আছে দ্য কোরিলেশন অফ গুড গভর্নেন্স উইথ ডেমোক্রেসি ওকে হ্যাজ মেন্ট নাও ডেমোক্রেসি লট কিউ রিলেট কইছে কোশ্চেন টু বিকজ ডেমোক্রেসি কি হইছে যে পাওয়ার শুড লাই আমার প্রিএম্বল লট কি লেখা আছে ফর দি পিপল বাই দা পিপল এন্ড অফ দি পিপল রাইট দা প্রিএম্বল হ্যাজ বিন গিভেন টু আস বাই আস এন্ড ইট ইজ মেড ফর আস ওকে সো ইট मींस দ্যাট ইন ডেমোক্রেসি the person living in the lowest strata of the society should get the benefits out of all the schemes or the public service delivery mechanism whatever is taking place by the government in terms of to promoting welfare okay so governance to tetia hai bhal hobo jetia amar power khini manuhor ta decentralized hoise dispersed hoise taller level lo jod ami kotha padim community participation jod ami kotha padim civil society's participation okay because civil society is also acting as what a pressure group karon actually democracy any ami vote to delay jeno amar democracy rights ami fulfill koribo parisu nai par if there is no opposition just imagine about the form of government that will establish in, that will get established in india it will become an authoritative government it will, it will become a totalitarian form of government so tene kwa samoyot amar good governance will definitely get what compromised 
it may get compromised. I'm not saying it will get compromised, it may get compromised. So that Jodi good governance is getting compromised. Who is playing a role? Civil society. So here we can talk about the example of pressure groups. Who are pressure groups? Pressure groups are talking about the rights of the vulnerable sections of so many sections of people. For example, Krishak Mukti Sangram Summit. Whatever their ideologies, forget about that. But what are they trying to do? They are trying to promote the voices of the farmers. They're acting as a pressure group in front of the government. For example, there can be various organizations who are working for minority rights, who are working for child rights, who are working for women rights. Okay, because okay, paper about welfare schemes launch benefit to Logalogam Anuradat Napai. Getting it? For example, MG Narega scheme. MG Narega scheme or under rot. Lot of people are working for 180 days in the entire year. But are they getting the money immediately? Sometimes it takes two, three years to get the money. Apuni din hazari hazari din hazari kori se, but apni poisa poisa after three years. How will the poor people survive? So here, government is trying to talk about universal basic income. But is the need of universal basic income actually there? No. Jodi government de existing scheme kini properly implement kore by dispersing the power to the governed by promoting good governance, that a universal basic income or dorkari nai. But that was a called a populist measure. Election in 2019, it was a very universal account of universal. It was a universal name. Okay, but MG Narigar, if you have a lot of money, okay, without any leakage, without any corruption, you can also quote examples of ration cards, National Food Security Act, etc. How many leakages are there? How many government have been solved by the but actually, you can get a in the night. Black market or Kiman sales, Kiman holding. Okay, so that these things will come only when you will give the power to the government. Because government monitor with the help of technologies. Yes. So, so what do we basically focus on with respect to this comment? Yes, I'm and coming to that. Do we focus on like, uh, the implementation part of the government or you know the collective? Of the society as a whole, like we, groups, as well as yes, we have to. You, we have to. I'm, I, I'm coming to the structure of the answer now. Okay, I'm just trying to highlight that from what what other perspectives you can think in this particular question. Okay, so when the question is talking about the relation between governance and democracy, okay, the question is trying to say that good governance in a democratic setup will only come when the power is dispersed to the dispersed to the government. Okay, so then now you have to identify the examples first of all that how you can justify this statement. It is asking you to comment. Okay, it is not even asking you to critically analyze the statement. Okay, so when the, the keyword is comment or the word that is mentioned, the question is comment. So you have to highlight that statement. But if the word have been critically analyzed the above statement, then you can also write that how this is true and how this is false at the same time. So since this is only comment, okay. So we will take uh, and in comment we have to write with examples. So first of all, the structure of the answer will be first we'll we'll try to define what is good governance, okay, and then we'll try to establish its relation with democracy. I've already told you you can write a simple definition of good governance, okay. Making public service delivery more efficient is good governance. You can even write as simple as like as that by removing corruption and leakages. Bas, okay, khatam. Good governance means promoting efficient public service delivery system by removing corruption and leakages in the government setup. Recently, government has been trying to promote good governance by promoting the, by giving the slogan of minimum government and maximum governance, through which government is also coming up with various electronic initiatives like Swine Portal, okay, uh, ENEM, etc. Introduction is over. Are you getting it? This is how you write the introduction. Now let us come back to now. Let we'll start writing with a body. Okay, that how what is the correlation between good governance and democracy? Okay, now what is now we can understand that what is democracy? Democracy means what rule of the people. Yes or no? Democracy is rule of the people. Okay, we are sending our representatives, but we can also bring them back if they're not performing well as per our own demands. Because I mean, five, five years we can change the leaders, right? 
So democracy can, you can write like this, for example, that in India, to promote healthy democracy, in true sense, good governance is one of the most important factor. For example, you can highlight, okay, always write your answers with examples. Okay, and when they are asking to comment, you have to give examples. For example, for example, welfare is an important aspect of democratic India under Article 37 and 38 of Direct Principles of State Policy. Okay, but if there are high amount of leakages and corruption, okay, in the government setup, welfare will be compromised, highlighting the fact that the good governance is not being promoted. Okay, yes. Sir, can you also mention about separation of power and the check and balance form which we need to do? Definitely, I'm coming to that because good governance can be all because when I'm mentioning about the authoritative and totalitarian form of government, how is that being checked? That is being checked by Article 50, separation of power. For example, for example, uh, we can talk about NJAC, National Judicial Appointment Commission. Okay, now national because good governance leakages corruption remove kori bolai ba amar system more efficient bona bolai judiciary has a very very important role to put a check and balance okay for example government always wants to interfere in the judiciary or the executive and the legislature and that was very much visible in the njac act which was passed in 2014 or 15 in that time period by amending article 124a where executive was about to determine in the selection procedure of the judges. But that was being nullified by judiciary by you using the doctrine of basic structure doctrine and judicial review. Okay, as per which was launched after the Keshwananda Bharti case. Okay, so that when there is a check and balance, definitely government is bound to follow the constitutional provisions. And what are the constitution provisions? The basic structure, the core principles of the constitution, which always asks the government to promote what? Good governance. Because why good governance? Constitution directly mentioned called as a good governance promote approval. Constitution key mentioned Kori say welfare of all, Article 37 to 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. What is 40 talking about? 40 is talking about the dispersion of power to the government through panchayat and local self-governance. Okay, you can even write about giving financial autonomy to panchayats and municipalities okay to make it a profitable body and look after the welfare of the people at the ground level okay you can even talk right about that a healthy democracy can be only promoted when there is minimum when there is no criminalization of politics and to stop criminalization of politics good governance is very much essential because if there is no good governance, there will be no transparency and accountability, which is again related with criminalization of politics. Jitna jada criminalization of politics hoga, utna jada trans, utna kam transparency and accountability hoga at the government setup. Yes or no? That is something we can understand. So, criminalization of politics will lead to bad governance, not good governance. What do you mean by criminalization of politics? When you nominate as an MLA or for an MP, Okay, we have almost 30 to 40 percent of the current MPs who have criminal backgrounds. Okay, we have we have around 40 percent of the leaders, political leaders of a country who have criminal backgrounds. All right, but they are still about able to survive because of the parliamentary privileges that they get under Article 105 of the Indian Constitution. Okay, so there should be electoral reforms coming up. In order to stop good governance, or sorry, in order to stop criminalization of politics, there should be more focus on election funding. Okay, because in election you are showcasing the power of muscle and money. Okay, and if criminalization of politics is getting highlighted, definitely we cannot expect good governance to come up. If you are criminals, ko bhej rahe ho, aapke leaders bana ke, so can you expect good governance from them by removing? Because they'll promote more and more leakages, and that makes your entire public service system more and more inefficient. Okay, so you can write with so many. I wrote the examples of APMC and ENEM. I wrote the example of SWAM, for example, education. Okay, now what is education? 
if you see the gov government setups of service delivery for education we see that all the conditions of the government schools are very very pathetic government schools government colleges platforms are very pathetic as compared to the private institutions of education but what is government trying to do now government is launching the swayam portal through mooc by collaborating with so many uh, good good institutes like iit madras they have launched a platform of nptel and they have made it free of, freely available for everyone okay so even if you during the covid situation even if you cannot go to the existing physical infrastructure of schools and colleges okay government at the same time is also trying to promote the digital network through national optical fiber network and bharat net project through which government is interconnecting all the gram panchayat with broadband internet connections so that at village levels through swayam portal government is able to cater or deploy the needs of the education for the poor sections of people even if they do not have internet connection no problem they will they can showcase it through gram gram panchayats because all gram panchayats under nofn will be connected through broadband internet connectivity okay that is that is trying to promote what that service delivery will become more service delivery of what of education service from the government because right to education is what it's a fundamental right from 6 to 14 years of age so that is also public service delivery but our government able to do it in a very efficient manner no because in, even in mid term scheme there is so much of leakages and corruption happening okay so even in the quality of teaching government is not able to look after it you can talk about health sector okay in terms of it was may it was uh, visible during the covid time period when we talk about a health de delivery okay because government is running so many schemes like universal health coverage national health mission okay under national health mission government is running national rural health mission and national urban health mission but in our society 97 percentage of the fund goes on in the rural sector but what is the condition of the primary health centers there are no doctors available in the phcs okay there is a there is a deficit of doctors there is a deficit of nurses there is deficit of hospital beds so this is also public service so is this public service efficient and effective no so is are, is it promoting good governance no when our masses are not healthy can we say we are promoting healthy democracy no so good governance and demo, healthy democracy is directly correlated when you will promote the service delivery systems in a more efficient for example if you talk about health system if government and that is why government is now trying to promote more and more what hospitals more and more medical colleges so that the as per even who world health organization for every 1000 population there should be at least 10 doctors there is a figure i might be wrong but there is a figure there is a ratio but we don't have even have one single doctor for every 1000 population in our country so our public service cannot be improved unless and until unless and until we do what that we are giving the power to the government at the lower level mane government mane ki koise lower level decentralized so phc level of to ami power dibo laibo to look, to promote the public service in a more efficient and effective so apni etu concept junto level of example we have you can quote through 10 examples you can write 10 points that is your answer okay you can quote about education you can quote about health you can quote about agriculture okay you can quote about women rights you can quote about child rights you can quote about LG, lgbtiq community rights everywhere good governance will fail and when good governance will fail your democracy will fail because people's rights are being violated do you understand for example right to education is a fundamental right of the children below between 6 to 14 years of age but they are not getting it and especially women female child female child or if we see uh, if you go by the data of human development index our average age that our adult is spending time in education is how much 5.4 years only average adult of india spends only 5 years 5.4 years in schools even after right to education being a fundamental right that means what our rights are getting violated when our rights are getting violated our democracy is not getting promoted in a healthy manner and this is why because there is no good governance in the sector from the government side good governance simply means 
that any public service that the government is giving should happen in an efficient and effective manner by removing all the leakages and the corruption and by promoting transparency and accountability. If you can understand this, you can apply and write so many points. confusion idealistic realistic Tell me. Power concentration about with elites. With elites. What I will suggest here that the structure of this answer should be first you define what is good governance, then you define how it is related with democracy, as I told you. Okay. Then you write at least six points that how if the power is dispersed among the government, you can give the example of PHC, you can give the example of Gao Panchayat. You can give the example of social auditing, okay, among the mandals during SOP, COVID situation. You can give the example of powers, power money, ki, okay, power money, ki, okay, uh, don't understand that power means uh, only to, for decision making. Power even means empowering the citizens or providing them training. For example, during disasters, which takes place in our society, mitigation of disaster can be increased or improved if you are giving training to the local citizens or the, to the local communities who are more vulnerable to a particular disaster how to respond at the time of disaster okay that is also a part of good governance because you can reduce the risk of disaster after that and that is you can otherwise you are giving the power only to ndra for sdrm that you have to wait till they come and sort out this issue but now you are giving the power to the local community by training them, by empowering them, by giving them proper training, how to respond during the disaster time period. Okay, and that is how you are promoting good democracy, healthy democracy in the country, by empowering the citizens of the country. So you can quote at least six, seven examples in this, okay. And after that, after you can just write maybe that about the instead of centralization in the elites, okay, you can just criti uh, critically analyze one in one line that why centralization of elites is required where it is trying to focus upon the having more inclination towards a unitary form of government okay for example during emergency time period or for example during external threat when can we declare emergency unitary centralized pura elites elites mane ki center of that okay but leaders ki nita best example ami ki likho paru when it is shifting towards a unitary form of government the highest form of centralization of power is our the best example is emergency time period. Our here time is not That we cannot talk about giving because mass. How will mass respond when China will attack us? For example, if there is an external threat, we have to declare emergency under Article 352. Yes or no? So at that time, centralization of power is also required. Okay, at that time we cannot go by that uh, dispersing the power among the government. We cannot go by that route. Because China to attack Korea, but our our mass key decision, that power power center decision level no more. That central decision level, and at that time period, even if the states' power are going away, and state subject or list of all the centers can also make power or any decision or any act, then it is fine. Okay, so there we can counter this particular statement that that in that sector why it is important because otherwise country's national security is getting threatened. Okay. There will be no good governance if there is no centralization of power at this particular situation when China or any other country is attacking us. For example, if there is an external threat. Or it can be also in the form of internal threat. Getting it? But that will not write much. Why? Because they are critical analysis DNI. They are called common progressive. But still, we can write at least one point. Okay? Countering the given seven. Are you able to understand? Is it very difficult? No. So if you... so, But again... See points. I mean, combo gale ulai thagi mo points. Good governance combo gale. Our good governance. Our tax reforms. So to apnaal ke likhi wapar. Okay, tax reforms. You can write. Okay, you can write about market reforms. Okay, you can write about uh, this incentivization of tax to the startup to promote the startup culture. And startup hole ki hobo. See, I am just giving an example. For example, good governance ke kya hoice. Suppose we talk about Assam startup nest. Assam startup nest to karne ki hoise, manu hai job creators hoise. 
কারণ তার ট্যাক্স ইনসেন্টিভাইজ করেছে সো गवर्नमेंटে নিজের পাবলিক সার্ভিস ডেলিভারি টু অল অফ এফিসিয়েন্টলি প্রমোট করেছে ফর एग्जांपल তো পিপল আর বিকামিং মোর এন্ড মোর জব ক্রিয়েটরস সো পিপল আর গেটিং জবস পিপলস পারচেজিং পাওয়ার প্যারিটি ইজ ইনক্রিজিং সো ইজ ইট প্রমোটিং হেলদি ডেমোক্রেসি ইজ ইট অ্যাকচুয়ালি মেকিং দা কান্ট্রি ডেমোক্রেটিক ইন नेचर यस যদি হোয়াট ডু ইউ মিন বাই ডেমোক্রেটিক রাইটস does it only mean that we have the right to vote it makes us democratic no democratic means we have to be free from what from some external power of of or from some external domination no we have to be free from all the social problems like poverty like lack of education lack of uh, access to skills lack of access to uh, uh, bank credit facilities এতিয়া আমি কব যে আমার মানুষিনি এমপাওয়ার আর ডেমোক্রেটিক ইন ট্রু সেন্স হইছে সভারিন হইছে এমপাওয়ার্ড হইছে গেটিং ইট সো ইউ ক্যান রিলেজ সো মেনি থিংস উইথ দিস আনসার ওকে देयर इज নো প্রবলেম ইন ডুইং দ্যাট ওকে এন্ড দ্যাট উইল মেক ইউর আনসার মাল্টি ডাইমেনশন লাস্ট সর আপনা লাগে হেট লিখি পারে যে দো দিস স্টেটমেন্ট ইজ ভেরি অ্যাপ্ট ইন প্রমোটিং হেলদি ডেমোক্রেসি রোল অফ গুড গভর্নেন্স ইজ ক্রুশিয়ালি ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট ভেরি ভাইটাল but at times or situations like emergency okay dispersion of power amongst the government may not be the right decision or the right step at that time of crisis where centralization of power to the elites or to the central government is an important factor eta counter koi dio pare teta ki dekhabo je okay candidate jono eta matured understanding as compai se je akal that means you are not just simply driven away by the statement given in the question are you getting it this is how you should write your answer this is the structure yaar yaar our basic basic confusion problem na lagya jodi besi ekhu likhole nai simply write good governance can good governance is a part of topic we will study okay etia mona na na thakilo this will always remember good governance means what promoting public service delivery in a more efficient and effective manner by removing leakages and corruption and promoting transparency and accountability in the system good governance has been recently uh, put more focus by the recent government by highlighting with a slogan of minimum government and maximum governance along with promoting systems like single window clearance system and ease of doing business there is also good governance kyo karon ease of doing business ki koise 10 ta pillar count koise je apnalge business jodi set up koise electricity connection bhalke paisen nai pa land acquisition of bahut beshi problem face korise niki okay credit facilities paute bahut beshi harassment hoise niki trade license law te bahut beshi harassment hoise niki that is also part of good governance aur ekhini bostu ease out kori dile he manuor ki hobo manuor nijor purchasing power bahibo tetia healthy democracy promote because then people will be out of all the social problems like poverty like disempowerment like lack of education is it clear thik ase so question eta jeti apnake pabo okay so moi etu iman kyo emphasize kori asu in one single question because we will be learning this topics from monday so monday pra mur iman scope na thakibo ba belek faculties iman scope na thakibo iman interrelated kori then a good governance ami almost at one point not interrelated kori so that practice you have to evolve when you are studying something you can ask me the question that whether we can connect this or not because that will only help you to pass the mains নহলে কালি তো আমি এটা আনসার লিখিছিল এন্ড দ্যাট ওয়াজ এ ভেরি সিম্পল আনসার জাস্ট অন হোয়াট কি আছে কোশ্চেন টু লার্জ হাইড্রোইলেক্ট্রিক প্রজেক্টস হেতু সবেই জানে অখিল গগৈ প্রটেস্ট সবাই তো সবেই জানে যে তার নেগেটিভ ইমপ্যাক্ট কি হব তাতেই আপনাদের লেখা প্রবলেম হৈছিল এন্ড থিংক अबाउट দিস টাইপ অফ কোশ্চেনস ইয়ার জানো পয়েন্ট সুলাবো এটা দুটাকে বেশি যদি আপনি বহুত বেশি কনফিডেন্ট নহয় নুলাবো পারে পয়েন্টস তেটা কি হব তেটা আপনি দুটা পয়েন্ট লিখিবলা আপনি এইট হয় বলে পেজ কি সো লট গেট মার্কস আর নহলে 2 মিনিট হওয়ার পিছতে পয়েন্ট উল নাই হোয়াট উইল হ্যাপেন ইউ উইল প্যানিক দ্য 2 মিনিট বেস্ট টু কলেকুলি খান গেটিং ইট হোয়েন আই ওয়াজ রাইটিং দ্য মেইনস দিস টাইম মোর কাখন জুন বহি আছিলে এজন স্টুডেন্ট আছিলে তেও টু দের দুখন মান পেপার দের ভতে একো নি লিখিলে নি লিখিলে আই ডোন্ট নো ওয়াই আই ডিন টক টু হিম বাট সাকে প্যানিক হই গত বা একো না বাট নলেজ কম আছিলে but questions were very simple all of habile questions were like that shows that you are not thinking so a approach to start korok you can get your result in within one year that is guaranteed but if you do not evolve this interconnection can tete have points i want tete have means of points likhio paribo are relevant points ebo relevant points 
getting it ঠিক আছে Okay, so let us take one more question from GS2. It is a simple, simple question. It is a direct question. It is a question. It is a question. It is a simple discuss the administrative relations between union and states. It is a no poro kyo kare to politic kohi a direct question. It is a center state relations related topic as a chapter as a politic. It is a financial relations, administrative relations, legislative relations. This is a as simple as it is a simplest question. How about it? Direct question. ঠিক আছে ইয়া দেখো মাইন্ডু লগা বলনে যেখিনি পড়ি যাও হেকিনি আমার তাতে আহিব ওকে আর এটা গভর্নেন্স কোশ্চেন আছিল ইয়া এটা 12 নম্বর কোশ্চেন তো সাবো পারে যে ই গভর্নেন্স ট্রান্সফর্মস নট অনলি ই গভর্নেন্স ট্রান্সফর্মস নট অনলি দা ওয়েজ ইন হুইচ পাবলিক সার্ভিসেস আর ডেলিভারড বাট অলসো ফান্ডামেন্টাল রিলেশনশিপ বিটুইন गवर्नमेंट এন্ড দা সিটিজেন सेम ধরনের কোশ্চেন এ দুটো দিস আমি যে গভর্নেন্স পড়িলু মানে ডিসকাস কইলু নে Next question to this is that e-governance, please listen to this carefully. You know, discuss no core, it will already discuss for this way. E-governance is transforming not only the ways in which public services are delivered. Do you, do you agree? Yes or no? E-governance one key. All swayam or example they do. Direct benefit transfer example they do. Ebu ki hai? E-governance. Okay, tax reforms, e-governance. Okay. So is it changing the way how public services are delivered? Yes, because it, it is increasing the efficiency and effectiveness, but also the fundamental relationship between government and the citizen. Okay, so fundamental relationship between the government and the citizen. So what is the fundamental relationship between the government and the citizen? How is it determined? Can you tell me? Yet, ekunai. Yet, a slogan to promote a minimum government, maximum governance because government is trying to minimize the relationship with the people. Mane, upon the day, a home file, I got Dosta table of pass for the ATA single window clearance system. So, one more time, say, was for example, for example, I wrote one example here, and you can tell me how, how you like whether you like this example or not. I quote. Jal, uh, sorry, not in this one, in the earlier one. I got to eat more courses suddenly. Jal Jivan Mission. Have you heard this scheme? Jal Jivan Mission. Okay. Every household, they will get the drinking water facilities. Now, how it is changing the equation? Okay. Or how it is empowering the people? How it is promoting democracy and empowerment? Empowerment, how it is democracy promote healthy democracy? So, government or Tatu, Jaljivan Mishnot, power didia hoise to all the deputy commissioners of the districts. If you do not know, you should know. He can use this word. To all the deputy commissioners of power didia hoise, and they have been given the discretionary power to look after all the execution of the project or the scheme. Our protection district, protection district, or target set koridia hoise. Is it not an example of dispersion of power to the lower level? Yes. It is promoting good governance how because it is making the implementation process faster. But how it is promoting democracy? Good governance who the kilo by giving the power to the lower level. But how it is promoting democracy? Because the judge it will save four hours of women, females at rural level. Contain sexual harassment no they can spend those four hours in some other productive works and they can empower themselves by taking some training, by doing some business, by weaving, by making some food processing, anything they can do and they can earn something. So tell us rights to protect Togol when government is promoting good governance by dispersing the power at the lower level through schemes like Janjiban Mission. These are actual answers. It will both come on little, but this will come out only when you will read editorials. Or when you will know about how the actually the system works. These are real, realistic examples. Are you getting it? And this is also how changing a two example of the code by changing the relation. And this is also changing the relationship between government and citizens. How? By improving the social capital, the trust factor between government and citizens. 
কারণ গভর্নমেন্ট আপনি কি বলে হবে যে গভর্নমেন্টে কাম না করে খালি গালি তো আমি সো হোয়াট ইজ দ্য টাইপ অফ রিলেশনশিপ ল্যাক অফ সোশ্যাল ক্যাপিটাল ট্রাস্ট ফ্যাক্ট গভর্নমেন্ট অফ ইসাকে নরে গভর্নমেন্ট মানে পয়সা খায় বাট ইট ইজ নট লাইক দ্যাট গভর্নমেন্ট ইজ অলসো এমপাওয়ারিং দ্য সিটিজেন সো ইট ইজ বিল্ডিং আপ व्हाट দ্য ট্রাস্ট ফ্যাক্টর দ্য সোশ্যাল ক্যাপিটাল সো দ্য ইকুয়েশন দ্য রিলেশনশিপ বিটুইন গভর্নমেন্ট এন্ড সিটিজেন ইজ চেঞ্জিং বিকজ অফ ই গভর্নেন্স অর গুড গভর্নেন্স e governance is also what a type of good governance only because e governance is what making the public service more efficient more effective and removing kar apni jeta online transfer kori dise dpt ordinary scheme of 830 taka je apnar mohila account e khumabo tar 1 taka maribo pare kono majot kore maribo paribo niki kar government e kono direct transfer hoye geche bank to bank tar kono middleman nai msp e e governance e name তাত ফার্মার্স অফ খেতিয়কে যদি 1 কেজি সালো 50 টাকা পাবল লাগে 50 টাকারে বিক্রি হবো তাত মিডলম্যান কোমা পাই মারে বিকজ ইট ইজ রিফ্লেক্টিং ইন দা ওয়েবসাইট অফ ইনএম সো ইট ইজ চেঞ্জিং দা রিলেশনশিপ বিটুইন गवर्नमेंट এন্ড সিটিজেন্স হাউ বাই বিল্ডিং আপ দা সোশ্যাল ক্যাপিটাল বিল্ডিং আপ আ মোর পজিটিভ রিলেশনশিপ বিটুইন गवर्नमेंट এন্ড সিটিজেন্স দ্যাট উইল অলসো প্রমোট হোয়াট ফ্রম কনফ্রন্টেড রিলেশনশিপ আই হ্যাভ রিটেন দিস টার্মস এবো টার্মস করে পড়া নাই এবো মাইন্ডতে আছে নহলে কি হয় নহলে রিলেশনশিপ ইট আপনি জাস্ট ইমেজিন করুন না যে কমন ম্যান রাস্তা ঘুরি আছে আর गवर्नमेंट আছে কি হয় রিলেশনশিপ প্রটেস্ট ধর না অসমত স্পেসিফিক সো দ্যাট ইজ হোয়াট এবাউট রিলেশনশিপ কনফ্রন্টেড রিলেশন আই হ্যাভ ইউজড দ্যাট ফ্রম ফ্রম আ কনফ্রন্টেড রিলেশনশিপ টু আ কোঅপারেটিভ রিলেশনশিপ এন্ড হোয়াই দ্যাস ইজ ট্রান্সফর্মিং বিকজ অফ গুড गवर्नेंस এন্ড ইনক্রিজ ইন সোশ্যাল ক্যাপিটাল এন্ড দ্য ট্রাস্ট ফ্যাক্টর বিটুইন ট্রাস্ট ফ্যাক্টর বিটুইন गवर्नमेंट এন্ড সিটিজেন্স সো এই প্রকারে বহুত বেশি পড়িব লাগে জাস্ট ভাবিব লাগে আর ইউ আন্ডারস্ট্যান্ড ইন দ্য ফ্যাক্ট হোয়াট আই এম ট্রাইং টু টেল ইউ সো এই বস্তু পর আপনাকে কেনেকে ডেভেলপ করিব যেটা আপনাকে ডিসকাশন করিব বা আপনাকে যেটা পড়িছে আর এই পড়াটো উপর আপনাকে ইমান ভাবিব এই কারণে মানডে পর ইমান ইমান ডেপথ ডিসকাস নকর মানডে তো মই মানডে পর আমি সিম্পলি পড়াই যাব বস্তু যদিও তার মাঝে মাঝে উই উইল ডিসকাস ইয়েস বডিস because for any policy any scheme to be implemented government allows a nodal agency okay government allows a nodal agency for example for so many schemes the nodal agencies can be the department or the ministry itself okay and there are also constitutional statutory non ceremonial bodies will looking after also putting a check and balance to look after the implementation bodies for example let tell you one thing for example there is a scheme for prohibition of atrocities act for civil caste okay so whether their rights are getting fulfilled or not is being looked after by a constitution body named as national commission of civil caste under article 338 yes yes obviously there is a factor of penalization okay we'll come to those things don't worry because from monday when we'll when we'll be starting with polity we'll see in details there is check and balance there is a concept of penalization also it is there okay anyways so uh, i hope you have understood that how we have to develop our answers there is one question okay i want to discuss this specifically that uh, india and usa are natural allies please listen to this question listen to this question carefully india and usa are natural allies the, i am telling you it pura upsc standard question paper agode apsc er eba question nahi chile and do not be shocked ebar jodi apsc prelims er question paper jodi if it is similar with upsc pet do not be shocked okay he karone pohar standard to ala bahabo lagi because this is completely upsc standard question okay India and the USA are natural allies discuss the strategic reasons of India's closeness to the United States of America 
ঠিক আছে আমি যদি আয়ের পড়া নাই তো পড়া নাই একু নাই ওকে বাট আই জাস্ট ওয়ান্ট টু নো আমি আয়ের পড়িম ক্লাসত ওকে উইল স্টাডি আয়ার ফ্রম কান্ট্রি টু কান্ট্রি পার্সপেকটিভ উইল স্টাডি এভরিথিং বাট ওয়েন ইউ গেট আ কোয়েশ্চেন লাইক ইন্ডিয়া এন্ড ইউএসএ আর ন্যাচারেল অ্যালাইস ডু ইউ অ্যাকসেপ্টেড আর ইউ ডোন্ট অ্যাকসেপ্টেড হাউ ডু ইউ জাস্টিফাই দ্য আনসার আনসার <laughs> For example, after 2000, uh, from, from, the, uh, from this 21st century onwards, okay, after USSR broke down in 1990s, India's closeness with USA has been increasing. But with a lot of ups and downs, okay, which is seen even during the nuclear deal from the time of 2005, okay, many people had countered India's stand, okay, to sign a nuclear deal with US and Manmohan Singh's government was brought down to check at a level of by passing through no confidence motion in the parliament of India in 2008, sorry, 2007, I guess, way back, okay. So you, you can always start this type of questions by writing that India and USA from the time of India's independence had a hostile relationship during the Cold War time period due to more inclination of India towards USSR, which was visible during the time of Indo-Pak War in 1971, when USA Navy was about to attack India, but was stopped by Russia. So that highlights the fact that we are countering the statement in our very introduction itself. So I'd like to comment. Since 1947, the United States has been giving uh, has been in India. Aid in the form of PL 480. Yes. But we will, why will we accept that? PL 480 was a bola tha, ki wo So we will not consider it as granting aid, my dear friend. I am sorry to say that. But PL 480 will not consider it as, as aid to us. And that is why we brought Green Revolution. That is why we have uh, uh, Swaminathan. Okay, that is why we have uh, a target to meet food security in a country. And that is why we stopped importing rice and all the forms of aid from US. And that is why we moved more close to USSR. Okay. Anyways, we'll come to the discussions later on. But in this type of statements, when India and USA are natural allies, did anybody a direct statement did you have question or so do not always get carried away with the statements. Okay. Why I'm trying to highlight this point is because if you are Yad Nia said, discuss the strategic reasons of India's closeness to USA. So you will think only from one dimension, that it is our duty to write only the reasons about what? About the closeness of India and US. And that is how we'll highlight that how India and US are naturalized. Okay. So any of our questions were at a direct statement based question, so you should not be carried away with it. Okay. So here, you can start with that and then, but you can again make a transition in your answer, highlighting the fact that India and USA has been moving close in the 21st century. Okay. And what I wrote, I wrote the definition of what is meant by natural allies in international relations. Okay. You can define, okay. For example, what is natural allies? I mean, international relations are for him. Natural allies, Tetya Kong, Jetia, the relationship is having multiple dimensions 
not only in economic terms. For example, I'll give you one example. Janeke Amar India at a program launch for its look is policy. Okay, for the look is policy for the Southeast Asian countries during PV Narasimha Rao government in the 1990s. Look is policy at a policy with South Asian countries, Southeast Asian countries launch course. But that was only in the form of economic engagement, okay, with the Southeast Asian countries. There was no defense agreement. There was no strategic relationship be, be, building up. Getting it? But gradually, this Lucas policy has evolved with Southeast Asian countries. Okay? Lucas policy got divided into two phases. First phase, of, it was only economic. Second phase, of, it even developed with programs like what? Trilateral highways. Okay? Connecting Assam to uh, Thailand. Okay? And then now we can see the new form of Lucas policy in the form of Actis policy after 2014, after the formation of the new government, where we are focusing more on strategic building relationships. Okay, we are where we are not only focusing on the Southeast Asian countries, but we are also going beyond Southeast Asia to our extended areas in the Indo Pacific region through the policy of Actis Asia policy, where we are also ready to engage in a defense sector. <coughs> we are, we were ready to sign a what free trade agreement, okay? And that is what is also the same thing happening with USA now. When India is signing LEMOA, COSMOSA, two plus two strategic dialogues, what is all these things? Or nuclear civil agreement 2005, okay? What are these things? These are what it is bringing India and US together, okay? Which what he's also saying because of to threaten the rise of China in the 21st century. That is why India and US is moving more and more close together. And if you want to highlight the strategic reasons of India's closeness to the US, so you can write first point as I, I have written around eight to ten points in this answer. First one is Chinese aggression in the Indo-Pacific region. Very specific, crystal clear through the policies of string of pearl theory or through the policy of one belt, one road initiative. Okay. Second point you can write down to control Chinese. Uh, to control Chinese uh, dumping policy of its exported goods in all the developing countries. Because what China does, China tells the currency to devalue Korea. Or devalue Korea, devalue, for example, I'll, I'll, I'll explain you. For example, suppose this is a product. Okay, a product to dump, suppose India manufacture code, 200 rupees. Now, if one dollar is equal to 50 rupees. When you are exporting it, how many dollars will you get? Four dollars you'll get because one dollar equal to 50 rupees. And this C of cost of production is 200 rupees. So when you are exporting it, you'll get four dollars in your country. Understood? But now if you devalue your currency, what China is always doing, devalue one key, one dollar will become 100 rupees. Omegol. Okay? So one dollar equal hundred rupees. How much will be? But the cost of production is still same, two hundred rupees. Now, how many dollars will you, will you get? You'll get two dollars in return. Yes or no? So in the international platform, your product is getting cheaper or expensive. Tell me, it is becoming cheaper. Yes. So it will be more competitive in the international market. So in order to stop this, okay, USA had tried. Okay, during Obama's time period, okay, during Obama's rule, but Donald Trump had nullified it. During Obama's rule, uh, they had focused on, they had focused on Trans-Pacific Partnership, TPP. Okay, they had transferred, uh, sorry, uh, they had focused on Trans-Pacific Partnership to counter China's aggressive policy of regional comprehensive economic policy, RC. So that to stop the, to stop what? To stop the dumping attitude of Chinese goods in all the developing countries. So that is one major point because China is dumping only ki hoy, baki domestic manufacturers were lost. Okay. India and USA closeness ties should be also, is also increasing because of technology transfer at the time of climate change. At the time of dealing with climate change and promoting and meeting the SDG goals, counter terrorism, 
promote Koribulo, India and US are moving together. Okay? To, to stop terrorism in the entire world. Climate change policies, green economy, ba Amar Jikini uh, environment funding hoy from US. Okay? In that sector also, India technology transfer is very much essential. And through the technology transfer, India making uh, uh, making India policy can be boosted up. We need to move together to promote what? FDI investment from US in Indian current in Indian economy, which will also strengthen our forex reserve. At the time of 21st century, when the globe is facing the uh, challenge of climate change and rise of sea level and increasing temperature of the climate, India or US or relationship has to go strong in dealing these issues. Next one you can write about India needs to pro pro protect the Indian Ocean region from Chinese aggress aggression because China has been developing ports at various countries like Sri Lanka, Hambantota port, Pakistan, Gwadar port, Myanmar, okay, Q Q Q Q port, okay, then Bangladesh, Chittagong port. So it has been trying to capture the Indian and Indian Ocean region is very, very important for the entire globe. Because the major oil comes out from this particular area. And if China is building up all these ports, it can even send its navy. And that is why India and US is moving close to protect this region in the form of quad. That is quadrilateral dialogue between India, US, Japan, and Australia to counter China again. Okay. So you can write again from various policies. Okay. At the same time, last point, you can also talk about India, the the, the role of India's diaspora. Okay, the role of India's diaspora because a lot of Indians right now are leading US companies. You can quote example of Satya Nadella. You can quote example of Kunkuna uh, Silaru. Uh, Parag Agarwal. Okay, then you can quote example of Sundar Pichai. Okay, you can quote this because that is also building, making both the countries go strong. Okay, because they are also earning gaining from our education systems like I, uh, IITs and everything. Okay, and that talks about the importance of role of Indian diaspora. Indian origins are becoming members of parliament in American constitution, uh, American parliament. Okay, so that is how organically also our relationship is become, becoming more and more strong. And strategically also, we need the support of each other because we need the support of USA for technology transfer. USA also needs our support to stop the rise of China in the 21st century. Okay, so culminating all these points together, you can highlight, you can write so many points, please. Sir, in writing international relations answers, uh, like for a question like this, we just stick to the facts of whatever we know historically. What do you, you want to write about theories? No, no, no. So, uh, like what is the proper way of uh, representing your answer? Like uh, also, Question that he asked that uh, we also if you if you want have some prejudice or some uh, biases for a particular ideology. No, no, no. Okay. So my uh, opinion is like uh, if we are forming, for example, we take this statement about natural lives and uh, strategic reasons for India's closeness with USA. So uh, whatever facts you have said, that is also a way of writing. Or, or do we like this? Or I get confused uh, when it comes to international relations. As to how to refrain from putting your own uh, prejudices or you know or your own viewpoints and keeping the answer just about what it is and not extending up to going up to your own views and what you think. First of all, you have a space limit. Yes. You cannot go beyond a particular limit. Secondly, you have to be smart to tackle this kind of questions. So, so what is the strategic way? Like which strategy should we follow? Like just go by a bit of history and a bit of reason. Uh, that's it. That's that it. Is, a, is it like why I'm confusing an answer? We also write that this is uh, what my point of view is, or this is what do you think that that answer. Is I'll possible? give you. I'll, I'll give you my example. This is what I say. For example, can you please mention how we introduce the topic? Yes. Now that is what I have been trying to do. Yeah, that is what I am trying to do. For example, what you can do here is what is the meaning of natural ally in international relation. Natural ally means, okay, for example, India and Israel is a natural ally. 
Okay, India and Israel is a natural because there has been no doubts in the relationship. From all sectors, we are having a cordial relationship and natural ally can only develop when you are having you, uh, when you are having different ties with that country, when you are having economic ties with that country, when you are having technological cooperation with that country, and when you know that that country, in terms of the relationship with that country, there is no downs, situation times of downs, okay, with that country. And India and Israel has been a natural ally throughout the time period, right from the time of independence. And we can accept that particular figure. Okay, but... Since India and USA relationships have, have, has never been always cordial, okay, since the time of India's independence, so that is why we will not directly go by with the statement, we'll, we can either write that from the initial time period, India and USA were not natural allies, but right now it is moving towards becoming a natural ally. We will also not accept it 100%. We can, you can start writing like that, okay, you can even quote an example during 1971 Indo-Pak War. USA had sent its navy to attack on India, okay? But that was stopped by Russian because Russian navy was already present in Indian Ocean. And seeing the Russian navy, America backed its own navy, okay, during 1971. So that is definitely the lowest point uh, when USA was supporting Pakistan to attack India because India was supporting the creation of liberation war of Bangladesh at that time, right? So you can you can start writing by defining what is natural ally in this type of question, and then you can highlight that India has not been always a natural ally to US, but now it is moving close enough to become a natural ally with US, which we can understand with the help of the following points. Okay, then you write down first point that what are the strategic reasons of India's closeness to the US. Okay, so strategic reasons may you can even talk about because US talks about a lot of freedom of navigation, for example, okay, which is also important for from India's perspective. We cannot allow any country to violate our EEJs. Okay, there is a concept of economic exclusive zones, which is ruled or which is looked after by United Nations Convention on Law of the Seas. I mean, we put him international relations, sure. but that has been violated by China in South China Sea. Okay, they have violated the EEJs of all the countries like Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, in the concept of by developing the nine death lines. But India wants to promote the freedom of navigation, which where it also needs its, the support of USA because it has to go against China. Okay, so there is also one point why India is moving more and more close to the United States of America. All right, now you can ask me a question, a counter question that why not Russia? Why not Russia is not that much bothered about the freedom of navigation in the ocean water? Because Russia has no such uh, availability of ocean water with it. Because the northern boundary is entirely frozen. Okay, and, and it is now fighting with Crimea. Crimea was also annexed because in order to get some access to what? Ocean, oceanic water or warm water in the form of the Black Sea. And now it is also fighting for the Ukraine. That is a different chapter altogether. But Russia has nothing to do with the freedom of navigation in the ocean. Right? Forget about the Arctic Circle as of now. Okay, but because that is the global common that will come under the topic of global commons. Global common is the key. is also super kind of common. Then again, international seas, space stations, bus, the entire space, okay, the air or the Arctic resources or the Antarctic resources. These are all called as what global commons. Is that clear? Okay, so that is how we start. Then we give eight points. Okay, and then and then. We can conclude or before conclusion, we can write one, two point that it is always important for India to maintain its sovereignty. Okay. And not simply guided by American norms. For example, at a time while dealing with Iran-India relationship. Okay. Because India should not be guided just by uh, following USA's uh, demands. And we cannot simply cut off our relationship relationship with Iran because Iran is very important for India in terms of the north south transit corridor in terms of getting an access with Afghanistan in terms of getting access to the oil and natural gas resources of Central Asia and also in terms of connecting with the European nations through Iran through Azerbaijan and so on and also Iran is also important for India because India when 
is it is developing all the developmental projects in Afghanistan. It is it is having only one entry point, and that is through Iran, and that is a Chabahar port that Iran is developing. Okay, so all these things. So hey, just hey, point of me highlight for paro. The India needs to maintain its sovereignty, and it should not be dominated by any other country's decision, and it should not allow any country to interfere in its internal affairs. Okay, because. India is a democratic and sovereign and republic nation in the 21st century. Okay, and where in form of we can stop it like that only. Okay, I mean just I mean do highlight kulo je closeness to hoyse, but really I mean iman close hoy jam niki je I mean our sovereignty do I mean ki kori I mean compromise kori ni. We'll not do that. India can never do that. Okay, and that is the relevance of NAM in 21st century non-alignment movement. Okay, even non-alignment movement can come in your question. That what is the and Ajikali question we have a contemporary times of food. What is the relevance of NAM in 21st century? This is the relevance of NAM. Getting it? This is the relevance of NAM in 21st century mm -hmm. that India needs to remain sovereign and it should not allow any other country to control its internal efforts. Are you getting it? So we are thinking from again a multi-dimensional aspect. Okay, I'll give you one question. Let me see how your mind is evolving. Okay, write down one question. Discuss the role of civil service. It's a very, very simple question. You have a simple question. And, and you are also preparing for civil services. Discuss the role of civil service in realizing, in realizing the true objectives of a democracy. Discuss the role of civil service in realizing the true objectives of a democracy. Substantiate, substantiate your arguments in the light of the functioning, in the light of the functioning of the Indian civil service. In the light, in the light of the functioning of the Indian civil service. Okay, I'm giving you seven to eight minutes. Very simple question, okay? Very simple question. Objectives of a democracy. All right. You just need to focus on that and substantial arguments in the light of functioning of the Indian civil service. What did you say? Question two. Civil service one key that will also reflect how much you are able to understand about the role of civil services and how it is promoting the, the objectives of democracy. Now you understand what we already discussed in the last few answers, objectives of democracy and how civil service is playing a major role into it. Getting it? So try to think, even if you do not know it is not a problem, try to think, try to open up your mind and let's see how many points you can write. We'll discuss after seven minutes. Okay, it's 7.15. I'm giving you a time till 7.22. Okay, try to write at least 10 points. Try to write at least 10 points. Just try to write the structure.
traffic timings on 720 to stop. Tell me the points that you've written and not check. Tell me what you've written. Ah. Uh, so, first here, I so, uh, just mentioned about the word student service as the role, as the word itself says, it's the primary factor for any problem for development. Second, so I mentioned about uh, it, uh, civil, uh, in, like, civil services also play the role of uh, policy judicial role. Because they have the civil servant is also an executive magistrate of the district. So that helps in helps from docket exposure in the judiciary. So and then the third I have mentioned, uh, actually that was the second I mentioned, is about uh, uh, while the constitution has structured the role of each governing body with relation to the doctrine of separation of power, uh, it is also it is to the branch of the civil services to include the forces from more grassroots level. And also, sir, I mentioned about uh, the role of functioning Indian civil services that I was right, just writing. So, it was okay. the second part. Okay. So, I you tell me what is like the question is asking discuss the role of civil service in realizing the true objectives of a democracy. How yes. have you highlighted? Because so, I. So, I was actually uh, about to go there, but then I just started writing about the. Because I, I had scenario. said this yesterday that whenever there is a statement, you have to address that statement. That how civil service and is trying to realize the true objectives of a democracy. Because the statement says like that, no? So we have to address that statement. Okay. So I, I believe that these two three points of mine have been in relation with the democracy. That's, that's but but I, I but what is the true objective of democracy? Did you mention that? No, no, I ah, you have to mention. I that is why each and every keyword of the question is very important. Getting it? You wrote this much, na? Yes, and also for a cost of the top. Uh, How it is functioning? Yeah, we can substantiate. Uh, what do you write? Just tell me the points. So, present COVID scenario. Uh, so just read. Just read what you've written. So, I was just about to write, sir. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so you just read what you civil occupations. What does that mean? Tamale, <laughs> you are preparing for civil services. You don't know what is civil services. What is civil occupation? Achan, then. Okay. Good. Okay, it's like an answer to Funi in a call like a good general kissing question of specific this and all the true objectives of democracy. It's like a more hit point. I feel what what are true of what are true objectives of democracy. Huh? Some of the people. Minimize corruption. corruption. True objective order. Okay. Uh, Rajasri. Some of the entire nation. That is even being done by the exit, uh, pol politicians. You have to write something specific. No? Can we say that uh, democracy is also, you know, ensuring all our, uh, since the constitution is sovereign here, so, you know, can we just say that uh, democracy or uh, objective of proper democracy is to ensure all the fundamental rights to every individual? Yes, you can say. Unlimited killings. Third part, the solution to the key defense. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, what have you written? Backbone of India's democracy. Okay, we can start like that. It is a permanent professional transition of administration. Okay. Then? Umtas? 
ओके पॉइंट्स के लिए सर ओके ओके राहुल वॉट एव यू रिटर्न द फर्स्ट टाइम आई कम टू यू नेक्स्ट दिस पॉइंट आर रिटर्न बाई एवरी वन ना पॉलिसी इम्प्लीमेंटेशन वॉट एव यू रिटर्न बोलो रीड लाइन द इंट्रोडक्शन But I can't, I can't, I can't find any relation with the objectives of democracy. There is no mentioning. That is indirectly, like it is getting reflected. Yes. But I want some direct reflection. Yes, it will happen. But is it mentioned in your answer? Is it directly reflected? Okay. Okay. So, so you have to directly hit the bullseye in the answers. because of two particular challenges space limit and word limit okay so so if i if i if i write this answer for example true objectives of democracy the most important objective of democracy is what to conduct free and fair elections if your election because that is the most important part of what to make a country democratic what is the difference between democracy and some other forms of government which is not democratic in a democratic country people have the right to vote but only when it is free and fair yes and civil services is having this power to conduct the elections in free and fair because the politicians are not having this power or even if they have the power but they will not never want the elections are free and fair because everyone will want to win the election by using improper means by showcasing their money power and muscle power or by promoting criminalization of politics what is the job of election commission election commission is also part of the civil services yes or no who are the election officers the civil servants okay and it is the most important part and i will hit the statement by writing that civil services play the most important vital role in conducting free and fair elections in a country ultimately real helping to realize the true objective of democracy in india can you write like this is the statement clear enough in the first line itself yes or no don't you think conducting free and fair elections will promote or help us to realize the true objectives of democracy other things will definitely right but i will directly hit the question in the first statement itself so what is stopping you now you need to all analyze what is stopping what stopped you to did you write about election anyone did anyone write no what is but do you know this thing that i have said this is where the problem lies you are not able to open up your thinking process or you are not able to relate to the exact things or the points which the question wants or demands or expects you to write 
this is where the problem lies with 90% of the candidates. And that is why they, they will say that I have written so many things, so many points, but I'm not getting marks. Why? Because you are not directly hitting them. And ultimately, everyone is writing same policy. We will write those points. No problem. We'll write those points. Those points will be also in the answer. But we have to, I'm always telling you that you have to produce some uniqueness in your answer to fetch at least two marks extra, or one mark extra in every answer. That will only produce the result. So my point here about the uh, civilians officers paying the costly education loan. But that was not directly reflected. Definitely, definitely. But did you directly reflect that point? Yes. Okay. So, what did you write exactly? So, I know civil servants play the role of executive magistrates as well, which helped them implement the cost education role, which further helps from rocket explosion, providing uh, the democracy. Yes. But I would have liked it if you could have given the example of conducting free and fair elections. Huh. Because that is very specific. Our answer should be specific, highlighting the questions demand. That is a general statement. Okay, quasi judicial body, even Election Commission of India under Article 324 is, is a quasi judicial body. Okay, is a quasi judicial body along with Finance Commission, okay, along with National Commission of Schedule Caste 338, or you can talk about even CAG, Comptroller Auditor General under Article 148. Okay. You have to think from those and with specific examples. Like, so, like from this point, I could go, like, if I would have written this point, yes. I should have uh, mentioned, like, for example, yes. for instance, yes. the yes. role of yes. That is something expected in the answers. Are you getting it? Other points we will write, definitely. So here we can write about even civil services is playing a major role in determining whether the provisions enshrined in the constitution for the protection of the rights of the vulnerable sections like SC, STs, OBCs are also being looked after to realize the potential or the objective of true, true democracy through empowerment of these vulnerable sections. For example, National Commission Schedule Caste, which is a constitutional body along with a quasi judicial body, is highlighting or the importance of realizing the needs and empower, empowering needs of the civil caste, which is also done by civil services. Okay, civil service is a body which looks after the enforcement of the law of the land through which the social justice is met. From where I am borrowing these points? From nowhere, from the preamble and the constitution. Because democracy, proper sense of the evolved provision, that ki like social justice like social justice ketia hobo only when civil service is effectively enforcing the law of the land or it is meeting the objectives which are enshrined in the provisions of the constitution in different parts, obviously. Yes or no? We can even talk about the fundamental rights because Jodi enforcement hoy properly, our enforcement kune kore. That is where the role of civil service comes. Many few, very few people will write about the enforcement of the law, but everyone will write about public policy implementation. So you will bring out one mark extra by writing the enforcement of the law of the land by trying to meet the rights or fulfill the rights of the people and meet and provide social justice or promote social justice in true sense in all the sectors, economic, political, or social. How economic? Because even in Financial, uh, this is Article 280, Finance Commission. Who is performing the job of Finance Commission? Civil Services again. Who is becoming the members of Finance Commissions? Okay, obviously there are certain criteria, eligible criteria who can become a member of Finance Commission, but a major portion is being played by what? The civil servants, even in NITI, even in Planning Commission. Okay, so this specific points you have to highlight. Apart from that, Promoting good governance, you can write. Okay, removing transparency and corrupt uh, uh, leakages, promoting transparency and accountability. All these are the roles of what civil services. Only then we can realize the true objectives of democracy. What are the true objectives of democracy? Now you can even highlight that part in the initial part of the question, answer itself. 
like some of the true objectives of democracy is to maintain equality okay to maintain social justice to promote social justice okay to promote freedom or protection of fundamental rights of the citizens of the people and how you can promote that only when your true civil not only civil service obviously but since the question is on civil services so we have to highlight more about civil services even judiciary is also promoting the same role in maintaining or provide promoting social justice or promoting equality okay it is because it is a guardian of the indian constitution it looks after it pro provides us check and balance but here we'll write from civil services perspective okay so we can introduce our answer by highlighting these points just in three four lines very specific and hitting the answer or the statement directly are you able to understand this is only will make your answer different from others and through that you will get at least one mark more in the introduction part itself tar bisot ami bahut likhim ami atta dosta point likhi par je what how civil service or because here the question is asking to substantiate your argument in light of functioning of the indian civil service okay so indian civil service of functioning of ki ki ase okay we can write all the things starting apni just constitution of parts kini bhabili ho all the different chapters i think it for example promoting the financial rights promoting the fundamental rights okay promoting secularism even secularism is also a part of the democracy objective of democracy equal freedom to for all the religions equal respect to all the religions maintaining law and order okay putting a check on all the negative impacts of various policies removing social exclusion from the society okay yes so uh, substantiate your arguments in the light of the functioning indian civil service that was the second part so um, how how do i understand that we do not need to write about uh, the we need to write about the roles and not the functioning indian civil service and what role they played in the current times the role you will write in the first part yes, itself yes. well you are, yes it would be that i will substantiate my argument but not only in a positive manner both ways you because you have to because here nowhere it is written to write only in the positive manner you will also write because of lot of leakages okay in the platform of civil services there are also various challenges that the indian society is facing okay that ami bahut points likho paru because leakages hole ki hobo manuar social justice meet na hobo you can quote with examples of meet the mill scheme okay you can quote examples of uh, leakages in the health sector you can quote examples in the leakages okay they too ami likhi bolbo in the last part and harassment also some yes uh, yes if in fact i wrote about red tapism yes. i wrote about bureaucratic hurdles okay why because that is no because bureaucratic hurdle is a part of the functioning of the indian civil service okay red tapism is a part of the functioning of indian civil service because of which our startup economy could not take off because of red tapism and but ta jodi apni okol etu likhi hai je policy implementation but there is also negative aspect because you have substantiate koisi your arguments in the light of functioning of so you have to write how it is positively functioning as well as negatively functioning but you have to write within the limited time and the limited space there is actual challenge okay so after that again you have to conclude with a positive optimistic remark that role of civil service is very high okay in meeting the objectives of democracy to maintain the or to protect the or preserve the rights of different vulnerable sections of the people of the society both points are likho paru but the actual crust of the answer will only be coming out when you are directly hitting the answer by balancing your arguments both in the positive as well as in the negative manner are you understanding thik ase so you should sapna ke enake likhise ne na likha all of adha hoyse answer to so that is where the challenge lies ar okol complete koile no hobo that you should not likhile page kini fill up kori ahile no hobo you have to write specifically with lot of examples baki ami civil service pori me tete apnake aru gom pabo okay gote kini aspects so we will understand this from a very broad phenomena all right are you understanding so from monday ami jeta apna class start korim monday pra so when we are trying to study any topic jene ke monday dhorilok ami will 
read some a few chapters maybe okay so, suppose ami fundamental rights pori asu ami je eta chapter pori you you will have to open up your mind you have to think you have to relate and when you go back home you will have to interrelate those things or to interrelate you need to be very clear with the syllabus first of all prottek on a weekend apnake syllabus kon mukhosto kori okay aru you have to know about the past year questions that what is the type of question that is coming in the exam that will help you to promote your interrelation okay and make your answer very much multi dimensional that is very important then only you will get marks otherwise random studying the books will not fetch you marks because you can see the civil service role to me sobe janu but ami likhi likhute amar points bur bhalke matured hoye ulai nahi why because of lack of thinking okay so i hope you will will all evolve together okay in the upcoming time period in the next 5 to 6 months major target to hetu hobo because tar bisoy ko main so preparation thakibo so that a call practice okay because i believe ya jiban ke students bohi ase hokolo ebar first time dibo right so uh, i think kejon mane this i got exam uh, one or two but i'll consider this batch as a freshers okay and i will my target will to help you all to evolve within next 5 to 6 months where you will become a master of interrelation okay and make your answer multi dimensional okay i think that will help all of us to clear clear this exam thank you and good night